I'm Julie Inkster, and this is my U.S. Open. I'm 42 at that moment. My kids are 12 and 8. Not any spring chicken. Everybody keeps saying, you know, why, why are you playing? I love being out there. I loved playing with the younger gals, and I felt like my game was still at a really high level, that I could still compete. In 1980, the U.S. Amateur, I went there, and I qualified like middle of the pack. But every day I got better and better and better. And the semifinals was Carol Semple, who was the legend. And I ended up beating her two and one. And then the finals, I played Patty Rizzo, and I ended up beating her two up. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there with the US Amateur Trophy and, and I'm, I'm like, how, how, how did I do this? I really grew as a player after winning the amateur. Hello, I'm Jim McKay. I'm in the headquarters of the United States Golf Association, the USGA. Right now, why don't we identify the women's amateur champion? And she is Julie Inkster of Santa Cruz, California. I think it really opened my eyes about, okay, I think I can do this, but boy, I, I got a long way to go. I hadn't been there since I won the amateur. I walk in and the clubhouse is the same. The golf course is the same. Some of the people that followed me from my amateur were there, you know, oh my gosh, remember you, you know, da da da, 22 years ago. And it was kind of eerie. It was just like, whoa. I mean, all the memories came back of winning the amateur there. And I remember going out my first practice round and telling my caddy, yeah, you know, I part this hole and this is the hole I birdied and, and uh, this is where I went one up. I always really played my best golf when I played with Annika. She sets a high bar. You know, you always want to play against the best. Third shot for Julie Inkster. I was the up and down queen. I got up and down from everywhere. Oh, oh, oh nearly hold it out. You know, on a course like that, when the wind's blowing and if you're not striking it pure, you got to grind. And I felt like my whole career, I was never the best ball striker, the best putter, the best short game, but I, would, I think I was one of the top grinders. And I just grinded out pars, made birdies when I needed to. 23rd Women's Open turns into 67, tied for the lead with Shady Waugh. Very satisfying. Everybody says, you know, you can't win on Thursday, but you can lose on Thursday, and that's exactly right. Wind is back today. It is a much different golf course. Yesterday morning, I think we probably had like five, six, seven, eight miles an hour wind. Today, it's up to 15 to 17 miles an hour, so the winds are gonna be a big factor today. That day, because the wind was blowing, every part is your friend out there, especially on a US Open course. The thing you want to do is fairways and greens, and I know I was not doing that. No spin whatsoever on that shot. I was making it really tough on myself. So Winkster records a bogey, drops back to even par now for the championship. Being a grinder I am, after I play and I don't hit it well, I hit the range. And that day I just said, you know what, let's just go home, regroup. Sometimes with the open, rest is better than grind. I'm always chasing her. <laughs> you know, she doesn't make many mistakes. She's very consistent. I think if she had to play my golf game, I don't, I'm not sure she'd be a golfer. <laughs> because I'm all over the map. Just two different contrasting styles. And I always admired her about that. I mean, it, it seems like whenever she got done with 18, she wasn't even sweaty. And I felt like I went to 12 rounds with Muhammad Ali. If anybody's played Prairie Dunes, it's not like you're chipping to a flat green. I mean, you're chipping to a green that has five yards of break and firm and fast. And I just remember my putting was, it was almost like I could see the breaks. 
I knew going into the US Open that putting was a huge part of that golf course. So I worked a ton on breaks. I did a whole bunch of drills with huge breaks and I don't know, it just, it just paid off. Number nine, I made the most incredible up and down. I think it's my top three up and downs. But it's just who I am. I wear my emotions on my sleeve, but I think that helps me. I can't play any different than who I am. For all that scrambling, you can't hit the birdie to go down. That's where I had a little talk to myself and calm down a little bit. And each of cut is back on top. She will not go away. We knew that at the start. So Sorenstam has company not only with McGill, but Julie Inkster. I knew Sunday I was going to have to be better. And I remember Saturday night, I was definitely, again, the last one on the range hitting balls. And Brian says, Julie, let's just go home. So we went back to the hotel and, you know, I'm swinging in the room trying to find something. And I knew all the pressure was going to be on Annika. So I really was in a great situation. I was chasing Annika and I knew I was going to have to play kind of a spotless round, a great round, because she's not going to give it away. I was going to have to go out there and take it. Felt like I found something on the range. And I just said, you know, maybe if I just, you know, get, get wider and get it more of an arc, you know, swing. And I hit a couple really nice drives, you know, da da da. And then I went down to my seven iron, hit a few of those nice seven irons. I'm like, all right, this is what I'm going with. It's so weird that you can hit so many golf balls and still not get any better. And then like 15 minutes before you tee off, you try something else and, you know, it clicks and you're off to the races. I don't know, I just felt like if I don't get in my own way, I can do this. This is gonna sound really weird, but on the second hole, I was above the hole probably about eight feet and it probably broke, you know, this much. And Gregor was behind me and I was looking at the putt and Gregor looks at me and goes, do, do you see that line? I go, yeah. It was like someone, someone just drew and I got up there and made the putt and he goes, all my time with Caddy, I've never seen something like that. He worked for me for 13 years, and, and he's like a brother to me. And as you know, I can get hot on the golf course, and, and he handles it great, you know, because I always say it's never him, never about him. Getting off to a start like that puts a little pressure on the leader, and I had a lot of confidence. I could have putted it, but I just felt like I'm a pretty good chip and run player. I hit a nine iron and, you know, just hooded it. I felt like I read it pretty good. And that one tumbles in. Inkster grabs a little air and elevation there. Pumps herself up. She's tied for the lead with Sorenstam. Winning a U.S. Open, you need stuff like that. I watch the leaderboard, whether I'm playing well or not. I'm a leaderboard watcher. For Birdie and the outright lead back-to-back -back birdies for Inkster, who eyes a second Open title at the age of 42. Her third shot. You've got the momentum, you're playing well, you know, you don't want to give one back. Now you get the chip shot. Up there about, what, 12 feet? I just knew the break and got the speed right. When I made that putt, I know I showed some emotion on that. Make the turn three under and going to the backside of the US Open, that's what you want. 11th hole, I think I was between an eight and a seven. And I hit a pin high, probably around, you know, right. eight to 10 feet. You know, I played a little, um, you know, balance because the greens were firm and that was probably one of my better approach shots all week. To me, she's lining up to read it a little right to left. 
I remember getting over this putt and saying, hey, you know, these are the putts you're going to need to win. Oxter moves to four under today. Remember, she began the day two behind Soren Stan. 12, actually, it always kind of gave me fits because, you know, the tree's on the right hand side and my miss is right. And it's very narrow. And I remember I hit a really good shot there and a good iron shot. And I just missed the putt. But, you know, kind of once I got past that hole, I was feeling pretty good. Even though we weren't playing together, I just really thought it was going to be Annika and, and I. She's within one. The USG does a great job putting the airboards all around, so I'm sure I knew at that point how I stood. And had a chip shot up to here, which I, it was a tough lie. So, I mean, I just kind of chopped it out, and I left myself a long cut, probably 20 feet for par. more of a gut check right then. You gotta make this putt. Really took my time on reading this putt because I mean, it was 18, 20 feet. You know, I knew she was watching and I knew she knew it was for par. That's good. And still not. You gotta be kidding me. What a great up and in. Sorenstam had a ringside seat. Annika was Probably happy about that also, but maybe not. That was pretty good. Game on. Yeah, that's a big miss there. He had a great iron shot, but where that hole location was, it was just really hard to get close. You know, I'm left with this putt that must break six feet to the right, but the Galbury is all around. You know, I just kind of read what I thought and tried to see if I could just die it in there. She's got it! Oh, what a reaction from Inkster. When it went in, to hear the roar and give it another really Inkster fist pump. It was amazing, amazing putt. I'll never forget it. Just a five under par, now a three shot lead with two to play. I still got goosebumps. My bogey 17 to par five. Eighteen is a very short hole, but it's very tight, and you have to get the ball in the fairway. That's a good swing. Down the right side, drawing back to the center. I just felt like I still had work to do. Annika, you never know until it's over with her because for her to birdie 17, 18, I wouldn't put a past her. So, I mean, I was still in the moment. I wasn't celebrating anything, that's for sure. Safely aboard. I felt like the fans were behind me the whole way and you know, to be able to take that visor off and acknowledge them. You can see me exhaling there. It's like, you know, it's been a long four days. So it's looking very good. That extra will win a second open title. I was watching her on the monitor in the scoring tent. Still, I'm thinking, okay, you know, Anna could, could hold out. I mean, she's only going to hit a sandwich in. And now it's official. Inkster has another championship at Prairie Dunes. 22 years later, she's the Women's Open champion for the second time. When I went to Waverly, it was so much easier just because I hit the ball so well. When I won at Prairie Dunes, it was a lot of work, and it was a big, huge grind. Back that, I won the amateur there in 1980, and to say I went back 22 years later and won the U.S. Open, not too many people could say that. I 
count my blessings that my kids really knew what I did and were, were part of what I accomplished. They were always really wanted me to play golf. I never wanted to be Julie Inkster, the golfer, or Julie Inkster, the Hall of Famer. I just always wanted to be Haley and Corey's mom. Look back on it, it has been a great career and it's something that I'm very proud of. USJ has been great to me. And to say that I'm a USGA champion, amateur and open winner, it's a great bookend.